I meant to do this sooner than now, but I need to give a special shout out to a fellow YouTuber who I do not know personally, but I have been following along his videos. I have learned so much from him on his journey, and I just need to give a special shout out. Hey guys, want to do a quick little talk here as I'm doing some traffic driving. I'm getting a fair amount of questions privately around my decision to go with a blower and go boosted. I can certainly understand that for many years I have discussed and taken a lot of pride in building a motor on muscle and going out and running with the guys with power adders and boost and etc. And I, I'm just going to tell you straight up, that's been fun. But technology has advanced so much, so fast. These days, anyone can go out and get any of the big three cars, put a plate of nitrous or two on it, one or two kits, put a turbo on it, put a supercharger on it, do a little tuning. And these days, for a street car with a decent set of small tire slicks or radials, it's not uncommon for these street cars drive to the track, run some six O's or high fives in the eighth, and then drive that bad boy home. And here you got someone like me in a 34, 3500 pound 48 Ford running a small block 406 with one carburetor on methanol doing every freaking thing I can to this motor to pull every inch of horsepower and torque out of it and we run six O's at 111 and it ain't nothing streetable about that 48 Ford then I got people going well why the heck are you going with a roots blower why not a turbo why not a supercharger you know blow through or why why are you not going with injectors etc I mean guys it's simple time money and learning yep I know blower wood carburetors I'm still I'm still in the 1990s or, or heck in 1980s 1970s but my gosh I, I got to start somewhere and I figured a roots blower is going to have a, a lot of torque. It's going to be a lot of torque quick. I need all the torque I can get getting that big old thing moving those first 60 to 100 foot. Running methanol, so I figured with spinning the, the blower as fast as we're going to have to spin it to get 22, 24 pounds of boost, methanol will help keep the charge cool. You know, I... I would love to be able to run a, an ejected motor with coil on plug, spark and everything, but I'm having to learn all this and I'm having to buy this stuff as I can. I mean, we've had the 48 Ford tore down now for about 10 months and it's just taking time to afford all this stuff and get it built. And quite frankly, right now, I'm putting a fair amount of time and money in the bottom end. This bottom end is where it all happens. It's got to survive me learning how to tune. It's got to survive boost. And I'm using this motor with carburetors to learn data logging. This is my first attempt at running a wide band O2 sensor. So I'm going to learn and I'm going to, I'm going to figure out how to log data. You know, I'm keeping it simple. I'm going to log two wide band O2 sensors. I'm going to log oil pressure. I'm going to log fuel pressure before and after the regulator, and I'm going to log boost, and I'm going to learn. You know, I mean, I learn by watching videos, scouring the internet, watching YouTube, watching people who have done this already. You know, I, I don't even, I have an idea where to start a plug gap, but man, I'm going to have to figure it out. I have an idea where my timing should be for 22, 22 pounds of boost, but I got to let the motor show me on the plug you know I got I got to figure all this out guys and 
I'm, I'm excited about building a 406 with an 871 dual methanol, car, methanol carburetors. I'm excited. Time is short, and you don't, you're not promised tomorrow. And I think the 48 Ford with an 871 and two cars sticking out the hood is going to look pretty freaking cool. I told Dad um, we got the wings built on the back of it to try to give us a little more downforce of this big old thing. I told him the other day, I'm like, Dad, I hope the car runs as, as fast as it looks. <laughs> and we both had a good laugh, you know. I mean, uh, it's all good. Um, we're spending time right now upgrading the brakes. You know, we're spending time changing the gear. It had a lot of gear in it, turbo 400. And, um, and on top of that, naturally aspirated, we had a 456 Pro gear set in it. I mean, people are like, oh my gosh, man, you got the turbo 400 first gear and and 456 gears? Well, I mean, guys, naturally aspirated, one carburetor, no nitrous, just methanol. You do what you got to do, man, to get that thing to launch and get it to go. Uh, we were running 128, 129, 60 foots. I was proud of that. That's nothing these days. I mean, if you're not running a, a 120 or one 115 or 114 it, you're slow i mean it's just unreal what technology has done these days and, and how far it's come so i'm excited about building the blower motor and uh like i'm i'm vlogging all this i'm vlogging the build and and i want everyone to kind of follow along there's a there's a combination there i get so many people ask me hey man if, if I put some of your parts on my short block, will it run six O's like your car? You know, I can't say that. A motor is a combination. You got to have the heads. You got to have the cam working together. You got to have the pistons working together. You, I mean, you got to have the intake to match the heads, to match your RPMs. Your converter is so critical. Your gears, your shift points. It's a recipe. It's, it, there's no magic bullet. I can put a massive Dominator intake that's been ported and polished by the best guy out there and slow down in my car. It's all about the combination. And unless I build it from the oil pan to the top of the carburetor, I, I can't help you predict what any motor is going to do. And the last thing I want to say, to, to go fast... To have a motor to do what you see happening on YouTube these days, it takes money. Money and more money. Nothing's cheap. All of us talk about budgets. All of us talk about running on a budget. But nothing is cheap. That's why we talk about budgets. We know we're going to go to the track and break stuff. It's going to happen. Time is important. You got a spouse, you got kids, you got grandkids. There's a lot more to life than racing. Time is quick. So if you want to go fast, it takes time, it takes money, and it takes a lot of mistakes to learn your car, to learn how your motor responds. You know, I can go ask Turbo John, hey, what should I gap my plugs at? And where should I set the timing for my motor? He can tell me about his motor, and I can try to learn from that, but he can't tell me about my motor. I got to read my own spark plugs. I got to let the plugs tell me what they want. And it takes time. You got to study you got to learn. You, you can't just be spoon-fed how to go fast. So, just wanted to kind of share some thoughts and some of the questions I'm getting hit with in private. And uh, I, I appreciate it. I mean, I, I'll talk it through any time. But, you know, at the end of the day, I feel good about what we're doing. I think it's going to be a blast. And I think, I think we're going to have a good time. I think my son is going to really enjoy seeing this 48 run with a blower and two fours and 20, 22, 24 pounds of boost. I don't think that blower is going to have the top end charge of a, of a turbo or even some of the newer 
superchargers. Um, but I think it's I think it's going to be fun, and I think with the chassis we got under that 48, I think I think it's going to be a good little ride. So that's that's all I wanted to share. Thanks for listening, or not. It's your decision. Have a good day, guys. Go fast. Go straight. I meant to do this sooner than now, but I need to give a special shout out to a fellow YouTuber who I do not know personally, but I have been following along his videos. I have learned so much from him on his journey, and I just need to give a special shout out to Turbo John. I'll put a quick link through an info card here to his channel, his site, but let me tell you something. He and I have never met. He doesn't know me from Adam, but he has taken the time to post videos and share his learning and his mistakes and his heartache, and I value that. And if anything, he's inspired me to do the same because I believe in the racing community when people are honest and people share the truth with others, other people can learn and our sport will continue to grow. So Turbo John, thank you. Keep doing the videos you're doing. If I can ever help you, if you're ever in Charleston, South Carolina, and you need anything, you give me a shout. If I can help you, consider it done. Thanks, guys.